Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silvershots, Giagni, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. We just uh, finished the first lesson of this unit on deadlocks, and now we're going to continue with our discussion of the problem of deadlocks when multiple processes are competing for a shared or critical section. So let's get started. A deadlock situation can arise if the following four conditions hold simultaneously in a system. The first is mutual exclusion. At least one resource must be held in a non-shareable mode. That is, only one thread at a time can use the resource. If another thread requests that resource, the requesting thread must be delayed until the resource has been released. Condition number two, hold and wait. A thread must be holding at least one resource and waiting to acquire additional resources that are currently being held by other threads. Thirdly, there's no preemption. That is, a resource can be released only voluntarily by the thread holding after that thread has completed its task. And finally, circular wait. A set of waiting processes, say P0, P1 to P whatever, must exist such that P0 is waiting for a resource held by P1, and P1 is waiting for a resource held by P2, and so on and so on until finally P whatever is waiting for a resource held by P0. Now let me state again. All four of these conditions, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption, and circular wait must all hold for a deadlock to occur. The circular wait condition implies the hold and wait condition so the four conditions are not completely independent. Deadlocks can be described more precisely in terms of a directed graph called a system resource allocation graph. This graph consists of a set of vertices, V, and a set of edges, E. The set of vertices is partitioned into two different types of nodes. P, which is equal to process 1 to process whatever, is the set consisting of all the active processes in the system, although the same graph could represent threads. And secondly, there's R, which is R1, R2, to R whatever, the set consisting of all the resource types in the system. You see the symbols representing process and resource type shown on the slide to your right. A directed edge from process I to resource type RJ is denoted by PI and an arrow pointing to RJ. It signifies that the process PI has requested an instance of a resource type RJ and is currently waiting for that resource. A directed edge from resource type RJ to process PI is denoted by RJ with the arrow pointing to PI, which signifies that an instance of resource RJ has been allocated to process PI. A directed edge PI to RJ is called a request edge, and a directed edge RJ to PI is called an assignment edge. We represent the thread PI as a circle, as you see here, and each resource RJ as a rectangle, also as you see here. Since the resource type RJ may have more than one instance, we represent each such instance as a dot within the rectangle. Note that the request edge only points to the rectangle RJ whereas an assignment edge starts at one of the dots and points to the process. 
When process PI requests an instance of resource RJ, a request edge is inserted in the resource allocation graph. When this graph can be fulfilled, the request edge is instantaneously transformed into an assignment edge. When the process no longer needs access to the resource, it releases the resource. As a result, the assignment edge is deleted. The resource allocation graph depicted here depicts the following situation. The sets P, processes, R, resources, and E, edges, are shown like this. P is equal to process 1, P1. P2, P3. R is equal to R1, R2, R3 and R4, and E is equal to P1 to R1, P2 to R3, R1 to P2, R2 to P2, R2 to P1, and R3 to P3. Resource instances are as follows. One instance of resource 1, two instances of resource 2, one instance of resource 3, and three instances of resource four. Process states, process one is holding an instance of resource two and is waiting for an instance of resource one. Process two is holding another resource two and is waiting for a resource three. And process 3 is holding a resource 3. Given the definition of a resource allocation graph, it can be shown that if the graph contains no cycles, then no process in the system is deadlocked. If the graph does contain a cycle, then a deadlock may exist. If the cycle involves only a set of resource types, each of which has only one instance, then deadlock has occurred. Each process involved in the cycle is deadlocked. In this case, a cycle in the graph is both a necessary and sufficient condition for existence of deadlock. If each resource type has several instances, then a cycle does not necessarily imply that a deadlock has occurred. In this case, a cycle in the graph is a necessary but not a sufficient condition for the existence of deadlock. To illustrate this concept, let's examine this resource allocation graph again. Suppose that process 3 requests an instance of resource 2. Since no instance of resource 2 is available, we add a request edge from process 3 to resource 2 to the graph. At this point, two minimal cycles exist in the system. One cycle is process 1 requesting resource 1, which is assigned to process 2, which is requesting resource 3, which is assigned to process 3, which is requesting resource 2, which is assigned to process 1. There's a cycle. Bump, 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 like that. The other cycle is process 2 requesting resource 3, which is assigned to process 3, which is requesting resource 2, which is assigned to process 2. There's the cycle. There, 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 and back to there. So we've got two cycles. Why don't you pause this video for a minute and retract those two cycles yourself. Processes P1, P2, and P3 are deadlocked. Process P2 is waiting for the resource R3, which is held by process 3. Process 3 is waiting for either process 1 or process 2 to release resource 2. In addition, process 1 is waiting for process 2 to release or <laughs> in a, in a <laughs> In addition, process 1 is waiting for process 2 to release resource 1. Can you see why a graph is helpful? Now, now consider this allocation graph. 
Process 1 is requesting resource 1, which is assigned to process 3, which is requesting resource 2, which is assigned to process 1. There is no deadlock. Notice that process 4 can release its instance of resource 2. That resource can then be allocated to process 3, breaking the cycle. In summary, if a resource allocation graph does not have a cycle, then the system is not in a deadlock state. If there is a cycle, then the system may or may not be in a deadlock state. This observation is important when we deal with the deadlock problem. Now this has been a long lesson, so why don't you just take a break and maybe rewind this thing. I don't guess you rewind on a computer anymore, do you? Back it up and go through these uh, cycles again so that you understand where this issue of deadlock is coming from. And when you're ready, come on back and we're going to talk about some methods for handling deadlock.